Lobster, harvested from the cold, clear waters of Maine, is truly the world's ultimate white meat. Lobsters have feelings, too. Consider their incredible cultural achievements. It has a distinctive flavor that's both mild and slightly sweet. Yes, I have good friends who are lobsters, and they all enjoy dancing. Everyone loves dancing lobsters. Maine lobster is good for you, too. 90.1 FM, KPS, Tacoma, The Sound. KUPS is sponsored by Trolley Stop Records, Tacoma's local indie label and recording studio. Featuring local bands, The Blankets, The Artichoke Project, Martin Fierro, Kiona Evans, and more. Visit www.trolleystoprecords.net for booking or info. Good morning, everybody. This is Casey Kralchek on Across Campus. You're listening to 90.1 KUPS The Sound. We've got an awesome show up ahead of us today. We have three guests in here today, our student group this week, the Black Student Union. We've got Sharon, she's a senior so and sociology major from Oakland, California. We've also got Sandra Rosa, she's also from California, but a little bit further south in L.A. And she is an English major with an emphasis in creative writing and an African American studies minor. And our third guest, Miranda, is a sophomore, she is currently undecided, and she's a local, she's from Tacoma, Washington. So, great to have you guys on the show. Um, I guess just to start out, I'd love you, for you guys just to tell us a little bit about who you, like, who you are, what do you do on campus, and so, Sandra Rosa, if you want, if you want to step up to the plate. Hi, I'm Sandra Rosa, I'm currently the Black Student Union President. Um, I'm from Los Angeles. I think what brought me here was mostly financial aid, because they, they give a good chunk. Um, I didn't know about this school at all. Um, but they sent me a brochure randomly. I don't know how they even found out about me, but they <laughs> sent me a brochure. And um, me and my dad looked it over, and we saw that they offered um, English with the creative writing emphasis, and that's what I wanted to do if I couldn't just solely do creative writing. So I decided that it would be a good fit after acceptances and rejections. I had my heart set on Fisk at first, which was kind of the exact opposite of this um, <laughs> I was but, looking at the university <coughs> I was looking at the University of Wisconsin Madison before this so yeah <laughs> doesn't get it doesn't get quite much more different but yeah um, so yeah that's pretty much it brought me here mostly financial aid so. all right very cool uh, Sharon mm. I guess you're up next four Good years morning, up, four years everyone. up Puget Sound yes four years uh, it's been a long four years <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I'm from Oakland California um, the reason why Puget Sound brought me here, honestly, I didn't even know about this school. Um, it wasn't anything through academic. It was all athletic because I play for the women's basketball team here. Mm -hmm. So it was more so through like an athletic pool. One of the coaches found out about me, and that's the only way I found out about Puget Sound. I was like, wait, what? What's this school? Like, where? It's in where? So that's pretty much the only thing that brought me here. And, of course, the financial package. It was pretty nice uh, they understood my situation so they helped it out a little yeah, bit yeah. but um yeah other than that it's mostly athletics and the financial package not anything else <laughs> well you, you, guys, you guys put it on a, on a great show i've been down to a couple of the basketball games so oh, thank you it's been great if you guys can make it Come up support us <laughs> yeah when, when, when does when does the season start it actually starts really soon november 15th is our first official game so if you're around come check out the schedule it's online you know just come check it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the new student group, for the new student section that they created, Log Logger Nation. Logger Nation, yeah. yes. I'm excited about that. I got my t-shirt up in the ASAP's office. It's really... <laughs> it's, it's, it's sweet. You need to come get one, and yeah, the shirts are nice. Like They're really, really soft. <laughs> they're like, cool. almost what color are they? They're maroon. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. They're anyway. almost in a ridiculous sense. Those shirts are so nice and so soft. Right. <laughs> Only 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You can do anything you like in those shirts. They yeah. are spectacular. Wonderful. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for that upcoming season. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, Miranda. This is your second year. Second year at Puget Sound. You're a sophomore now. Um, yes, I'm a sophomore here at Puget Sound, and I am a Tacoma native. So I've lived in Tacoma. Pretty How much about that? How about all that? All my life. Um, I actually forgot that Puget Sound was here <laughs> when <laughs> I was looking for colleges and then applying. I applied to like 
loads of colleges. I think it was like 11 was like my last count. And uh, <laughs> University of Puget Sound was just sort of actually a last minute one. And only because of a freak snowstorm was I able to actually apply because I was late. <laughs> <laughs> so like because I was late and there was a snowstorm and they had like shut down the whole school and everything. They were like, oh, well, you can still apply We're because we had this, you know weather events so i think it's like you know a sign that it was, I'm still it was able to it was meant to be <laughs> <laughs> When you said you said you were undecided with your major. Yes, I am undecided with my major. I'm trying to decide like within the next you know month or so before next semester begins. So um, I'm trying to narrow it down from like a sociology, psychology. I think so. I'm what I'm in between now. So hopefully I can get that figured out. Pull some numbers out of a hat or something. Play tic tac toe. I don't know whoever wins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gets to be the major. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what it comes down to sometimes. Like some of the ma some of the majors are so interdisciplinary that you can kind of take the intro level courses to a bunch of different classes all at the same yeah. time. Like for for me, I was doing a business leadership major and an, uh, thinking about doing an IP major and maybe a P and G major. But for that, I could take contemporary economics. I could take comparative politics right. and I think statistics. Yeah. And like those 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 are three courses I could all take my freshman year right. that would. I mean, it didn't matter which way I ended up didn't going. They applied, they, yeah, they applied to every single major, so you can really wait like quite a long, quite a long time before you have to decide like what you actually want to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sean, how did I guess we didn't ask you before? How did you end up choosing your major? Um, I first started off with having this idea that I become a biology major, and I learned quickly that I'm a little too more creative and artsy and all that for bio. I'm not so much to study books and. I hear you there. It's, no offense, <laughs> just not my flavor. Um, I actually found out that it was honestly the only um, major here at Puget Sound that fit me personally. I'm a very diverse and open person, and I like to study people, understand groups of people. So I kind of found that like notion of education myself. Like I felt more comfortable with that type of major and not having to feel like I'm doing something that's totally one side raced type major like some majors here are just a little more just a little more favoring mm -hmm. one side of like human humanistic approaches yeah and i feel like sociology gathers like a whole general like understanding of all groups of people and just it's kind of how i picked it yeah that was kind of the same idea for ipe with me yes it's like you, you, you deal with everyone <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah. You, you can you can go with economics politics sociology mm -hmm. and then within that you mean you, you kind of create an emphasis. I'm probably going to go with a politics emphasis, but nice. we'll see. There's still a lot of time to decide yeah. that. But mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the Black Student Union that we've got in the studio today. Sandra Rosa, what, what's the, what has the Black Student Union been up to? Like, what, what, do, you, what do you guys do on a, on a weekly in basis? So um, We have discussions that vary. I think, like, one of the favorite discussions. I've been part of the Black Student Union for four years now, and I think... Um, one of our favorite discussions is like interracial relationships that comes up every year um, and it seems like that draws a lot of people for obvious reasons so we're all y'all like people um, <laughs> of course. Pe people are our favorites <laughs> yeah um, we have like yearly events we have our Kwanzaa event our black community dinner um, Black History Month is, is of course really big for us we do um, poetry readings then and try to get people on campus to showcase their, their own art and stuff like that. Um, and this year we've tried to focus a lot more on like building connections within the Black Student Union itself, like members just becoming more friendly with other members. Um, so we've had like a couple of outings. We went to Quickie 2 a couple of Wednesdays ago and that was really good. Um, it's a bomb vegan restaurant out here. <laughs> um, and and speaking as unbiased, because it's not like, you know, you, you've been there a few times or that you, you know, you only eat vegetables. Favorite story. Yeah. <laughs> um, are, you, are you a vegetarian? I am a vegetarian. Oh, okay. yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Makes more sense now. <laughs> yeah. um, but they're really good. Even if you're like a meat eater, I've heard good things from meat eaters about Quickie too. Um, and we're also trying to like work with more um, SDC clubs on campus just to just to like build connections because 
as people of color, we are all going through, like, different forms of oppression and, like, just being able to talk to people about, like, how they're viewing their own experience here um, as people of color, like, from a different side of the realm, I guess, it would be, it's really good for us just to just to see what they're going through and, like, compare it with our own experiences here. So. Yeah, that, I went to the first meeting this year, and you kind of said right away <coughs> that this is a safe place. Like where you where you can speak your mind, you don't have to sugarcoat things, you don't have to hold back, and I think that's a really valuable asset that the BSU has in that anybody can discuss what they think, and it's it's kind of a, it's kind of a place where you can be a, much more open about how you're feeling and what you're thinking. So, yeah, I think um, one of the things that I really want people to remember, like in coming to BSU, is just like like when you're there, you need to like make sure that you speak openly and like candidly because I feel like other places on campus you'll feel repressed in doing that and so the BSU is really a place where like you just say like what's on your mind like no matter like how it's going to make anybody feel like if it's inside of you then like let it out because like we're there to like support you and hear what you have to say so we're going to take a quick break once again you're listening to Across Campus with your host Casey Krolchek you're listening to 90.1 KUPS, The Sound. All right, we're back. You're listening to Across Campus with Casey Krolchek. Uh, we've got the Black Student Union in the studio today. It's been a great conversation so far. I've been enjoying it. Our next topic, uh, why aren't there more black students at Puget Sound? I think it's something that more than one person has asked, black and white. So, Sandra Rosa, I guess if we kind of talked a little bit before about recruiting patterns at the University of Puget Sound mm -hmm. and how those uh, construct the student population. Yeah, I think, like, once you talk to students on Puget Sound, like at Puget Sound and figure out where they're from, it seems like there are a lot of people from Minnesota, a lot of people from Colorado. Of course, there's Oregon and Washington, a good amount from California, um, and Alaska and Hawaii. That's, like, the states that I see represented a lot. Yeah. And, like... I honestly don't know why those are the ones that they go to to recruit students from but like I always think like why don't they go like to southern states or anything like that yeah, I don't know that many people from like Louisiana or yeah. Arkansas or like mm -hmm. any of those states well the the recruiting office they, they I w I'm on the res life staff and one of our last presentations that we had that we had to go through during our orientation was uh, about this current class that is coming in, and they're really excited because they have they now have all fifty states represented. But they but we have all fifty states represented on campus, at least one person from every state. And they, mm -hmm. I think they pointed out like the few that only have one or two students. And so they said, make sure you don't lose the person from Mississippi. Make sure you don't. <laughs> oh my god! <gosh. laughs> sure, be nice to the person from South Carolina. <laughs> like, oh my god! They, they they did point those out to us. I don't think they're being totally serious, yeah. but. In some sort of sense, I think they do want us to make sure right. <laughs> they, they, they do like that, being able to say that they have one, uh, it, all they 50 have states that, represented. Like, on right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that whole notion. I actually think, like, since my first year here, I have seen an improvement in, like, the number of students yeah. of color on campus, but it's still not anywhere near where it needs to be to me. Yeah, um but, like, I've talked to people in that admissions office about this, and they said that they're, they are trying to, like, um, broaden their scope. Yeah. But I just, I kind of want to know what their process is in terms of broadening their scope, so. Yeah, I, I thought it was interesting at that first meeting, at, that, at the first BSU meeting of the year, uh, there were a few people who mentioned, like, I, f I feel like there are more black people on campus this year than there were last year. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was funny, like, during that presentation that they gave to us, they told us, Actually, it's the same percentage as there was with my class that came in last year. Mm -hmm. And so there was actually no increase. increase. But w I think somebody pointed out, maybe, maybe it's just because you joined the Black Student Union. You see them all in one room. <laughs> you, see us all, you, see, you see everybody around more often. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know if there was an increase in like the student of color population by any chance? Probably I think per percentage-wise, they said it was the same. And I think this class... Is actually smaller than than mine, if I remember right. Our, ours was a little bit, uh, it was a slightly larger class. So, uh -huh. but yeah. So, what was it like for the first time being on campus for you guys? Oh jeez. And what? 
What was that? What was that first impression? Like Sa Santa Rosa, you said you didn't. I, you you didn't actually get to visit campus before you 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 signed on. No, I didn't. I me and my sisters came here um, like during orientation. It was the first time I had been out of California, um, and it was it was like a completely different world. I feel like if I had visited campus um, before I like decided to attend, I would have gone somewhere else because I don't know. It's like because like I'm from Los Angeles and I'm from South Central Los Angeles. And in South Central, you have black and you have brown. And, like, my high school was, my high school was actually in downtown. And there were, like, literally, like, three or five white kids in my high school. And so I come to this campus, and I'm just like, Lord Jesus, I did not know that there were so many white people in this world. <laughs> and I was like, where are you all hiding? Because, like, you weren't in my part of L.A. And so it was, like, it was a big change for me, and I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable at all. And, like... Even can I say this? I can say this, right? Oh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I mean. Um, and even now, okay. I'm like not completely comfortable walking around this campus because it's still it's it's foreign to me. Like I grew up with like people of color, and that's not what's here. So <coughs> yeah. Yeah, the point of the show is to get student voices out there, right? And to give those perspectives to Puget Sound students and to. Tacoma and to all of our listeners, we have, we have listeners in Minnesota, we have listeners on the East Coast, and every once in a while we get somebody from we get somebody from Switzerland tuning in. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I, I was I was an exchange student in Switzerland my oh. junior year of high school. So every once in a while we have we have somebody from Europe t tune in, and that's all that's always exciting. We appreciate that. We we always appreciate that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's something that Puget Sound students don't usually recognize is that. Yeah, I it, definitely kind of feel like there's a spotlight on me whenever, you know, I'm out in, a, like, a large group where it's, like, you know, 50 people and there's, like, you know, maybe five African-American or um, people of minorities in that group. And so people really notice you a yeah, lot yeah. faster. And so it's sort of like there's a spotlight on you because you know that people are like, oh, yeah, that's... Because it's just, yeah, it's just you're just more visible and you're not, like, the norm. So you're just so much more noticeable that you really kind of are aware of it sometimes. I mean, sometimes I'm not... I don't notice it at all. Like, I'm in a class and I don't realize that I'm the only African-American person that's in it um, until we start talking about like things about like race and equality and I'm like wait oh right <laughs> let's, let's ask Miranda see what she has to say about it <laughs> so it's kind of kind of weird sometimes cause I don't, sometimes I don't notice it at all and other times I'm really aware of it yeah, yeah. well Sharon I want to make sure I get you in on this because you only have a, you only have a few more minutes left on the yeah. show we are first and foremost students so we have to recognize that about our guests and of course so yeah pretty much um my first experience here, I visited over winter break. It was during like one of the serious snowstorms. Uh, my teammates directed me around campus. Uh, no one was here besides a few admission officers and whatnot. And pretty much they they fed me a pretty good deal about the school and that it's very good. Like it's it's pretty much true until my first day here. The one thing I didn't share was the fact that I would be the only you know, 6'4", African-American female <laughs> on campus. So um, it definitely just felt like I had the spotlight all the time. And attending my first class, being the only African-American all of my classes, was a definite culture shock. I mean, coming from Oakland, California, it's, it's pretty much diverse. Like, everything there is black, white, uh, Mexican, Asian. There's everything, but it's predominantly black. So I'm more used to more liberal, diverse aspects and coming up here I, it's just a little change not really used to it so it was an eye-opener and till this day I still feel uncomfortable it's just I haven't found any type of comfort in being still the only black person but I definitely learned to like use it just as another source to like my diversity as a person myself being able to like deal with differences as people here still can't like deal with differences so it's definitely like a growth for me myself well yeah I think for me, uh, I think one of the biggest issues that the that the campus is facing is whether or not people recognize that there, there that there is that there can be an issue, or that there is even a difference between people's experiences based yes. on their race. And actually, there was a, there was a funny point in our African American Studies class, and we had we had Rosalind Bell. She's a uh, she's a local writer from Tacoma, she's and amazing. Oh yeah, okay. and we were talking we were talking with her about. about 
about race, and we could basically ask her whatever questions we wanted. And somebody asked, like, why, why do all the black students hang out together? Why do they create that little <laughs> bubble for themselves? <laughs> oh and she laughed. I mean, that was, that was, a, that was I mean. Wait, were I, they talking about students on campus? Yeah, they were talking about students on campus, and also from, the, from their high school. Mm -hmm. And she laughed and said, why do all the white people hang out right. to get, together? <laughs> like, like, you do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do the exact same thing. It's just a much bigger bubble. Right. <laughs> yeah. That is funny. But yeah, that, again, going back to that first meeting at the, at the BSU, a lot of people mentioned, like, this is a tough bubble to live in. They always use the word bubble. Yeah. It, it is. If you look at it... Um, Puget Sound is actually located within, like, I've heard the statistics about 12% of blacks in Tacoma, and uh, Puget Sound is located pretty much in the heart of a black area, and I feel like once you step onto campus, there's this bubble, there's this really nice institution, there's all these friendly kids, you know, friends, family, students, professors, and it's just a day and night difference. When I step off campus, uh, that's why I personally chose to live off campus, was so that I, ex I can experience, like, the outside environment, like, the more real world. I feel like stepping onto campus, it kind of, like, covers students from seeing, like, reality rather than experiencing it. It's definitely a different take. Yeah. Anything you guys wanted to add before we take a quick break? Um, I support going off campus every <laughs> once in a while. I think it's a really important thing. You know, we go to Seattle or just go downtown to, you know, see what foods out there or just just going out for like a while or for a walk i mean i know people say that you know you shouldn't go out alone or whatever but it's not this area is actually pretty safe i mean in comparison to many other areas i've been in this is this is a pretty safe and inviting place so just go out take a walk enjoy it enjoy life experience differences <laughs> and don't be afraid of the buses here it's not the oh no no <laughs> <laughs> You can have a nice story to tell afterwards. There's this guy on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Across Campus. I'm the host, Casey Krolchek. You're listening 90.1 KUPS, The Sound. Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom, come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. All right, we're back. You're listening to Across Campus. I'm your host, Casey Krolchek. We have the Black Student Union here in the studio today. And in this next segment, we're going to be talking about personal experiences. So we've, Sharon had had to leave, but we've still got Santa Rosa and Miranda here with us right now. So you guys, this is something that struck really home to me because it was, it was when I had a professor ask the black students in the room, like, how does your color affect your experience here on campus and in Tacoma and it wasn't until that point that I really realized like our experiences can be very very different just based on our skin color yeah I think um, it's really interesting walking around campus and like especially like when it comes to like what you do with your hair and walking <laughs> around campus because like a lot of my my freshman year I like wore head wraps all the time just because I was too lazy to do my hair <laughs> And I feel like people were more, like, accepting of me then when my hair was covered. And then, like, when it's out, like, in a fro, like, most of the time I have it tied back in a fro. But then when I wear it, like, all the way out in a fro, then it's just like, oh, whoa, there's, like, a black person on campus and she's, like, really black with the fro. <laughs> and, like, I remember um, one of my classes last semester, um, I had this professor. And I always, like, notice how people, like regard me in class and this professor like would always look at me when he would like talk to the class whatever and I remember like the day I came in that class with the fro like he would not make eye contact with me like at all and I was just like okay there's something about like overt blackness that makes people back away a little bit or like a lot of it actually so like things like that just really bothered me because like when I'm back in LA like I really don't think about how I wear my hair that much yeah. But like up here on like a mm -hmm. white campus it's like it it's like always on your mind, I guess. So 
yeah, how you present yourself to uh, people on campus. It's just, yeah, you have to be aware of that sort of thing, I feel like. I at least am. I know I, like, I don't know if this is too much about hair, but I, I definitely, like, like plan exactly when I'm going to, like, wash it and, like, what days I'm going to have it straight and stuff, just so that I know for, like, you know, if I have, like, a meeting or something that I want to have my hair straight for so I don't have to do as much work in the morning or something like that, that it's it's something that I have to think about. Mm-hmm. You know, that it's always interesting. It, well, for me, it's interesting when black women bring up their bring up their hair because I I grew up in an area that had almost no black students. I, I I don't think I had any black students in my graduating class in high school, and so when I first like heard the topic of like black women's hair, I didn't think anything. Of, I didn't think that there even was such a to- such a topic, or that there, <laughs> that there or, that, or that there even would be a point of tension. Yeah, totally. Like, but, why would you think that hair would be that different? But it, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, hair is. salons and you're like, the, what are those, like, you know, the barbershop or whatever those, you know, yeah. movies and stuff. I mean, they're not exactly accurate, but they do have a ring of truth. I know there is, like, a barber set up shop that I pass by um, sometimes that is almost exactly like that. As you know, the, yeah, the blue and white swirly cone and, you know, the brothers behind the seats and talking and... It's a lot like that sometimes, and sometimes it's not. So it's really a spectrum. Yeah, and it's interesting taking an African-American studies class because the professor will actually go into the history behind that. Mm -hmm. And I had my professor, Renee Sims, start to talk about it and just the history behind, you know, what what has been the definition of beauty and how how has that been constructed? And it's always been, well, you have to be white, you have to have... Uh, straight blonde hair and like this is how this is how like it, beauty was always depicted and so for people to have to try and work through that and for people to look at you and say well your hair is not straight it's not blonde it's not br- it's not like the shade of color that they, that is within this narrow construction or confines of what is considered beautiful uh, that can weigh really heavy on a, on a large number of people yeah and I, this, this like made me think about I feel like Whenever I'm online, I feel like there are a whole bunch of ads that come up with, like, these black babies with blue eyes. And, like, people (laughs) just, like, like, idolizing these little black babies with blue eyes. And I'm just like, okay, if this little black baby had black eyes, it would just be some other black baby to you. But, like, the fact that it has some feature that is, like, noticeably white makes it, like, different and, and better, I guess. And it's just... It bugs me. I actually had blue eyes when I was a baby. They didn't change until they were like five. I was five, and my uncles were like, "That's really weird." She's <laughs> kind of creeping me out, <laughs> honestly. So, it is like a thing that you don't see that often, but I I do feel like it's a bit more idealized than it really should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Miranda, what about you? You're a Tacoma local, uh, and you, I mean, and you decided to come to campus. Like, what what have you noticed, or what's the difference between like? Where you grew up and then moving to campus, what what have you noticed? Um, well, I um, I live in a hilltop, which I guess would be considered like you know the uh, quote bad part of town, but it's really not. Um, for a while it was though when I was uh, really little. You know there were you know people on street corners and you had to be worried about needles and that sort of thing. But um, as a whole, it's it's gotten a lot better for. Um, just like social activism, like people being aware of like the dangers and and sort of fighting for the community. So uh, yeah. that's a good thing. But uh, so yeah, I've lived in Tacoma all of my life, and I went to Stadium High School. That uh, that school from Ten Things I Hate About You that looks <laughs> yeah. like a castle. That's that's in Tacoma, and that's my school. I'm very proud. Stadium of Stadium High School. Yep, school in a castle, six floors of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but. The diversity, even at my school, for Tacoma, um, at least by senior year, it was not what it should have been. We lost a whole lot of, of students of color and, and diversity throughout our, our like t- transition from freshmen to seniors. It was kind of surprising like how many people just you know stopped showing up or that just weren't there anymore. I knew there was a few people from like my middle school and my elementary school that I just I didn't see and I didn't know what happened to them. It was just sort of weird just like seeing people disappear and not knowing why and uh like sort of being like one of the people left it was kind of a weird experience because you're like there was so many so many people that i knew from like elementary school and who and my elementary school and um had a pretty large um racial base so there was a lot of diversity at least it was a lot more than my high school so it was really kind of something that i was a little bit aware of 
but um, nobody really talked about it that much, which was kind of interesting. And they would always like say that the kids had like transferred to a different school, and that was just their way of saying that they'd actually dropped out, and they didn't want to be responsible as a school for having so many people drop out. So they would say they transferred, and then they would drop out of that transferred school. So it's sort of like a way of bureaucracy saying that like it wasn't oh it's not our fault they didn't drop out of high school they transferred and then they dropped out so yeah. You mentioned, a, well, when we were sitting upstairs, you mentioned a story of when you went out late at night to the Met, and you ran, you, you ran, you ran into the Tacoma police. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, me and my friend, uh, we, uh, for some reason, really wanted pie, and it was like 2 a.m., and, and we had been, like, chilling out in the dorm for a while, and we're like, you know, we could, we could actually go and get some pie. The Met is 24-7. We could... We could actually get this pie because we've been talking about it and we even made songs about it. I think I think a lot of Puget Sound students know this story or some version of it. <laughs> and so we're like, okay, sweet, we're gonna go and get some pie. So we started, you know, walking to uh, the mat and we had our glorious pie. We even had it warmed up and everything, and it was fantastic. But uh, we were on our way back and telling jokes and laughing, and we were almost actually we were on campus. We were like just a block on the campus. And uh, the police did this, like, slow stop, where it was like, were they really stopping for us? Or was they just sort of slowing down for the intersection? And then they did, like, the slow roll down of the window. And both my friend and I are uh, students of color, at least. You both look like it. She's actually half uh, Mexican, but you don't really notice. But anyway, so we were like, uh, what's going on with this? And so they did, you know, a flashlight in your eyes. You're like, hello, can we help you? And they're like, excuse me, how old are you two? And they're like, um old enough. <laughs> yeah, we're old enough. We're on a college campus. <laughs> what did you expect? And they're like, oh, all right, now you two be safe. And we're like, okay, bye. It was just a weird experience. Like, I don't know if it's just because we were both black or if we were just because it was like 2 a.m. But it's just, I just felt unnecessary because we were just walking back. We were laughing, having a good time. And it was just sort of a weird experience. Like, what was that all about? Well, yeah, and from, I mean, I'm white. And for me to hear a story like that, like that, that would not happen to me, and that wouldn't happen to, to at least in my opinion, like that. That's just not something that would. That's not something that would ever be part of my experience. Yeah, I feel like being, being black, you have to be like, hyper aware of like how people are gonna view you. Like I remember, um, like my sister, whenever she would go into like a grocery store or liquor store, she would always like roll up her sleeves. So, like, they would know that she wasn't, like, hiding anything with her. Like, like she wasn't going in there to steal anything. And, like, things like that. Like, people people don't really, like, think about it until, like, you have to live through it. And you have to, like, you see, like, how people view you as, like, a black person or, like, a person of color in general. And you have to, like, always be aware of that and always, like, try to work your way around it or, like figure out how you fit into that system. Yeah, I know, like, uh, when I was, like, in school and I would, like, go after school and people were like, hey, you want to go to the mall and stuff? I would hate to go with my backpack because, you know, it would have all of my stuff in it. But then it's like, you know, this big honking thing on my back. But then I would, like, go into stores and, for one thing, it would knock things over. But then it looked <laughs> like, you know, I had, like, all this stuff in my backpack. Like, I was trying to hide something. And I don't know if it was me. It was probably wasn't. But I know I definitely got followed a few times because I, yeah. you know, had a giant bag and... It's like probably one of the, not one of the, but one of the few people in the store of color. And so it was just sort of awareness thing that I was like, I really hated to go to the mall with my backpack because it was just uncomfortable. <laughs> All right, I want to come back to this conversation, but we have to take a quick break. You're listening to Across Campus. I'm the host, Casey Krolchek. We've got the Black Student Union in the, in the studio today, and it's been a great conversation so far. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. You're, listen, you're listening to 90.1. All right, we're back. This is Across Campus on 90.1 KUPS The Sound. I'm Casey Krolchek, and we still have two guests in the sh- in the sh- on the show right now. We have Miranda and Sandra Rosa from the Black Student Union. And we left off last time talking about like personal experiences that you've had around Tacoma or on campus that you think race had a, had a large part to play in. So I guess if we want to go back to that, like Sandra Rosa, was there, was there another like experience that you thought... Um, well, when we were <coughs> on break, we were, I was just bringing up a point um, that I noticed when I was younger. Whenever like I would go into stores um, with my dad 
or like go shopping with my dad or whatever he would always have like he would always have me wait outside with his bags or like anything he was carrying just because he also didn't want to be like perceived as like taking things and it's really interesting how like because i feel like if i saw him in a store i wouldn't be like oh this little old man is trying to steal stuff but <laughs> he's obviously like carrying things over from like when he was younger and like perceived in a different way um and so it's like it's a good marker of like how how this stuff like carries on with you as you grow older yeah. and like it's i don't think like you ever really get rid of like being overly like aware of how people are viewing you like based on your race so yeah absolutely yeah there was one there was one point that I think was important for me and in my development of an idea of who I am and what does that mean, where does that place me in relation to other people. And there was a point in class, I, it was a class with Dexter Gordon, he's an African American studies professor here at the University of Puget Sound. And he asked the black students in the room, like, how do you think, or ha, what, like, when has being black, like, shaped your experience? Or, like, when, when has that, like, really imp- impacted you? And one, one guy, spoke about how every single night like he, he's on the basketball team and every every night like when he comes back from practice he will never walk on the sidewalk he'll always walk on lit streets and he'll walk in the middle of the road just so he can avoid interactions with people that might feel make people feel uncomfortable or that will make them move to the other side of the street yeah and it's for me it's hearing experience like these because like i'm i'm white i don't i don't have that happen to me i know that i can walk on the sidewalk I, I know that people aren't going to worry about like, is is is, is this guy dangerous? Or that I don't have to worry about assumptions being made about me, and I think that's part of my white privilege that I, I've like come to recognize, and but not a lot of people do recognize that. Yeah, and it's a shame that people don't recognize it because like, I feel like when I first came here, I felt like my job was to inform white people about their privilege, and then I like later on I realized that that's that's still a form of like catering to the system like I'm not here to teach you about your privilege and like how this system works and is made for you like and it took me like a long time to like break that down in my head but it's I kind of I don't know like how to make people aware of it I don't know if I even want to try to make people aware of it it's it's like it's too much (laughs) Well, no, it, it is heavy. I remember, I remember when I was taking this class on race, class, and gender in the media. Again, this was with Dexter Gordon. I would get really, really excited about what I was learning about. Like it was all new to me. I mean, I'm sure for, for you, for you guys, it's something you experience on a daily basis. But for me, who was like, like someone who was just getting to know this aspect of our of our campus and of this aspect of our country, uh, I really, I really wanted to be able to talk about it with people. But for the most part, like. The pe- I mean, the people that I was living with and my friends, like, really didn't want to hear about it. Uh. And I think, I mean, kind of in a similar respect to you, I felt like I, I, needed to, I needed to share this with people. This is so important, and people don't even realize it. And that can be, that can be really difficult to try and... I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pent-up energy, it seems like. Yeah. And, and you kind of, you kind of want to let it out, but at the same time, there aren't a lot of people who are like, oh, yeah. Let's talk I, about this. Yeah, let's yeah, have a conversation. I, yeah. Or yeah, I mean, or or some people, some, some a lot, a lot of white students will just kind of like retreat in, into like their sh- their their shell and say like, well, what am I going to do about it? And I think that's one of the biggest issues facing Puget Sound in relation to addressing racial issues on campus. Yeah, pe- when it comes to race, people just really aren't willing to talk about it, and it's like not only white people, a lot of people of color will shy away from the subject too. And I honestly. I don't understand why because like when it comes to me like I'm willing to be open about it and talk about it that's why I'm president of the BSU right now um but I remember one time my first year (laughs) I was um I was in my dorm and I overheard some people talking about um how like what we need to be focused on is like classism um and like we're too worried about race or whatever and like that was like one of the first times I realized that people really don't think about things the way I think about things because in my mind race and class are like directly linked to each other and I feel like I don't I don't really know how to like start that conversation with people but it's a conversation that needs to be had because 
if you don't understand that, then you're really not going to understand, like, the whole picture. Yeah, you're not yeah. going to understand, like, the world around you and how other people are living in this world around you. So. There was a presentation given last spring to the student population by Professor Rich Anderson Connolly. He's in the sociology department. <laughs> and he was basically he basically gave a presentation about he was advocating for colorblindness like he was he was saying that in reifying race and always like admitting that it's a problem and admitting that it's a part of the way that we think we allow it to be a problem but so his, his what he was advocating for was to ignore. stop try, <laughs> i mean ig ignore color stop looking at people like they're like they're black and like they're white and in I mean, and then in relation to our recruitment practices, he was saying, you know, we need we need to stop like focusing on diversities and just start like fo focusing on trying to get the best students on campus. And instead of trying to make people more equal, but or trying uh, instead of trying to promote equality through uh, promotion of, of, a, of a race, he was saying just tax everybody. And I mean, look for me, I I kind of took a moment to look around the room as he was giving this presentation. And people were really, really tense. And I was, I was sitting next to a couple people from my class, and they were, I mean, they were really tense. It was making them very uncomfortable. And when it came time for questions, there was just kind of an outburst from the crowd. And people, people had wanted to respond to him, ask questions, and but, but I think like part, part of it, like they had to, they had to work through a lot of anger and a lot of tension because yeah. they, they felt like he wasn't really seeing the entire picture. And I think, like, <clears throat> especially coming from, like, a white male perspective, it's, of course, it's, like, easy to say that yeah. race isn't anything, but, like, it's, it's just not ridiculous. as noticeable for some people. It's just not something that they think about. So, you, it's not like you would expect them to, but it's something that should be more, uh, put more in the spotlight, put more awareness on, because I know a lot of people don't even think about that as, like, a problem or as something that's different. So... Just uh, just because you don't know about it doesn't mean it's not there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, we did. We talked a little bit about recruiting practices and like what <laughs> what the university could do to promote to to make the campus a, a little bit more friendly for black students and I mean and and for minority students in general. Like, what what do you guys think that the university could improve on? I think. Um I think one good thing would be, because we have, like, core requirements here, I think if there was a core requirement that, like, specifically, um, <clears throat> like, made students think about race, that would be really good. And if it was taught by professors who knew what they were talking about and weren't... Um, in their own bubble. Yeah, yeah, exactly, who weren't in their own bubble. That's a w good way to put it. Um, I think that would really help. And just, I don't know, this reading up on stuff in general would be good because a lot of this stuff like you can find in like books by bell hooks or audrey lord or even like the autobiography of malcolm x like this this knowledge knowledge sharing i guess would be good yeah i went to a really great teaching with the dalai lama this summer and he s several times he referred to ignorance as the greatest evil that the world is facing and i couldn't agree with it i couldn't agree with him more like you cannot address problems related to race rela related to sexism classism or anything until you are willing to put the time and effort into learning more about it and to really caring about it mm -hmm. and so i th i mean that's that's what i think is the biggest step for the, that the campus could take and was the biggest step that i took it that i took in my path towards really getting to know like what it means to be what it means to be white, what my privilege is like, and where does that place me in relation to other people and so it's a it's a it's a long process, but I feel like a much better person because 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 like i i I'm okay with acknowledging what's going on, and as soon as I'm able to do that, I can start looking at how can we make this better all right. We're just about at the end of our hour. It's been a spectacular show. Miranda, Sandra Rosa, really glad that you guys were able to come in. It's been a phenomenal conversation. Glad to be here. Yep, <laughs> it was a good time. All right, you've been listening to 90.1 KUPS The Sound. I'm Casey Krolchek. 
This has been Across Campus. We'll see you not next Monday. We've got a break, but two weeks from now, we'll be back on the air. Looking forward to being back in front of the microphone. It's been a pleasure.